If you clicked on this video then chances are you probably know what Home Assistant is. But if you don't, basically Home Assistant is a very great solution for controlling your smart home devices all in one place. It can be installed on pretty much any device and it's very versatile. In this tutorial I will be going over how to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 4. You can use other solutions such as a Docker container or potentially a computer or a Raspberry Pi 3 or something like that. But I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4 since it's the most up-to-date model and it's very low power consumption and it's just, in my opinion, one of the best ways to go about doing this. So for this tutorial, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4 with a minimum of 2GB of RAM, though personally, I would go for 4GB or more if you have quite a few devices. Also, you might want to pick up a case as well. I think this one's like a Geek case or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but it's really good. It's got a cooling fan on it, so it will keep it running nice and cool. The case is optional, but I would highly recommend using one. Also, you will need a micro SD card. I think eight gigabytes should be the minimum, although if I were you, I would use 16 gigabytes or more. You will need an ethernet cable to connect this directly to your router or switch or whatever, however your network's configured. And last but not least, if you want to control Zigbee devices, then I would highly recommend using a combi stick. And in case you're wondering where to get all these devices from, I'll leave affiliate links in the description. Of course, you don't have to use these links, but if you do use these links, it would be much appreciated as it will help the channel out and create more quality videos in the future. Okay, so enough talking, let's get started. So the first thing to do is head over to Home Assistant's website and download the corresponding image for your device. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, so I'll select that one. I'll leave all the links in the description so you don't have to worry about finding everything as well. So we're just gonna go to Get Started, Installation, Raspberry Pi. When you're on this page, we're just gonna scroll down. And another thing you will need is Balina Etcher. So I'll leave a link in the description as well to download that. So we're just gonna scroll past this and get to the stage here. So again, you know, we're using the Raspberry Pi 4, so we're just gonna select this, copy it. We're just gonna head over to Belina Etcher's website and just download it and then select your corresponding operating system. So at this stage, make sure that your micro SD card is connected to the computer. And then I'm gonna to go to flash from URL and simply paste in the URL and then okay. Then select your target SD card. And then flash. This stage shouldn't take too long, so I guess you might want to grab a drink while you wait. Okay, so once that's done, just simply install the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, like so, and then connect the power and ethernet cable. Make sure that you connect the other end of the ethernet cable into your router and head back onto the computer. So the next step is to connect to the Home Assistant instance. So we're just gonna head over to this link here. And once you head over, you should see a screen something like this. This could take a while, as it says up to 20 minutes, so I suppose it's a good time to grab yourself a cup of coffee or drink or something like that and come back to it once it's finished. So it looks like it's all finished. It didn't even take five minutes in my case, which is quite good. So I'm happy about that. So what we'll do is we'll just enter a basic username. I'm just gonna call mine user and then put in a very super secure password and then create account. This will create a local account on your Home Assistant instance so you can log into the platform. Give it a name, I'm just gonna leave mine on home. Then you can fill in all of this if you really want to. Then if you really want to, you can allow some of these. I'm just gonna leave it turned off for now and then go to next. This is one of the things I love about Home Assistant. It just recognizes pretty much most, if not, everything in my case it recognized most of the devices on my network which is great so there's very minimal setup that's required we're just going to go to finish and that's it you pretty much set up home assistant so first of all you are greeted with a very basic dashboard there's pretty much nothing on this dashboard we need to populate it 
before we populate the dashboard it's probably a good idea to set up some devices so we have some devices to add and work with. In order to set up these devices we just need to go to settings, devices and services and most if not all of your devices should show up on this section here. I think we're going to add the hive heating system first of all we'll just configure it and then I just need to log in my hive account. I've logged in so I'm going to give this device a name we'll call it uh, heating system okay great submit once we added the device home assistant will ask us which rooms are these located in since the heating system isn't really in a specific room I'm going to create a new area I'm just going to call it home since that the whole heating heats up the whole of the house it just makes sense in this scenario now we go finish we just added the very first device what's nice is the configured devices just show up on the dashboard once you finish setting up all of your devices it should look something like this it's not the best looking dashboard in the world however the beauty about home assistant is you can easily customize this and there's so much options available to choose how you want it to look and function and things like that now you may be thinking this is all well and great we can access this on a computer but it's not really convenient thankfully home assistant does have an app that you can download which is great this is available on the app store or google play store and it's very simple just head over to the IP address of your home assistant instance and you should be good to go so once you've configured everything there's so much more that you can do with home assistant obviously I haven't covered this in this tutorial to keep it nice and short hopefully it's short hopefully it was informative and you are up and running with home assistant thanks for watching if you found this informative or helpful or anything like that don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads from me and yeah thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day